now we have Shane Gracious up next. Uh, Jane, Shane has two co supervisors or two supervisors, Dr. Christopher Barrett and Dr. Hanadi Sliman. Uh, he's doing his PhD in chemistry at McGill University. And the title of Shane's talk today is Photoresponsive DNA Nanovehicles for Controlled Drug Release. Thank you, Shane. Am I working? Am I on? I just... You ready to go. <laughs> Do you know why cancer patients lose their hair? This is a question I pose when people ask me about my research and most people respond, not exactly. So from there, I explained the concept of off-target activity and some of the issues with drugs in the field of chemotherapy. Although counterintuitive, an issue with many of these drugs is that they're too efficient at killing cells. These drugs are composed of highly reactive molecules that aggressively attack cancer cells, killing them and inhibiting their further reproduction. However, these drugs are so reactive, they also attack our healthy cells. It's like if I asked a toddler to bring me an apple from a table that has an apple and an orange on it. Well, I'd be impressed if they brought me the apple. I wouldn't be too surprised if they brought me the orange. After all, they're both fruits. Still, we shouldn't compare apples to oranges and the same goes with their cells. Cancer drugs make false analogies between our healthy cells and cancer cells, and for this reason, are unable to differentiate between them. This gives rise to the concept of off-target activity, where the drug will attack our healthy cells instead of the intended target cancerous site. And this is why our friends and family lose their hair. The cells responsible for its reproduction have been attacked. This is also why something as insignificant as the common cold becomes a life-threatening situation for somebody undergoing chemotherapy. The patients are cell deficient and this mere loss of hair that we see visually actually corresponds to the loss of billions of more cells that are vital for our survival. So how do we overcome these issues? Well, one method is the use of nano vehicles. These are nanostructured macromolecules that act like vehicles to safely transport the drug to the cancerous site, where ideally they can release the drug to react with the cancerous cells. In our lab, we create these nano vehicles using DNA. This poses two distinct advantages. First, DNA is safe. It's floating around inside every one of us and poses no problems. Second, DNA is simple. Scientists have shown that by using DNA's inherent properties, we can fold and click DNA with other DNA to make three-dimensional shapes. So the idea is we take the DNA, fold it into a three-dimensional shape, and then put our drug inside it. Inside this DNA cage, the drug is trapped and can no longer react with the healthy cells. Once the DNA has successfully transported the drug to the cancerous site, we then invoke a controlled release mechanism, which frees the drug and allows it to react. But how do we control this release? This is where the use of azobenzene comes in. This is a fascinating molecule that can alter its shape when light is shone on it, switching from a straight to bunch bread structure. So imagine how when implemented into the middle of a DNA strand, this molecule would induce bending, similar to how your elbow bends your arm. Now we can use these molecules to safely transport the drug to the cancer site, and then by shining light on them, selectively control their release. This promotes a more controlled approach to cancer therapy that alleviates a lot of the issues associated with off-target activity. I hope that through these strategies in the future, I can propose a new question. Do you know why cancer patients used to lose their hair? Thank you. <laughs>